is telling you it's for sale to the highest bidder. How do they sell law? They sell law by never letting you know they're selling it. It's a secret. It's a trick. It's a subject matter issue that has no um, bearing on the subject matter of the person. Now, I'm going to wrap this up here because I've been going for a minute. And I had to do about four or five videos just to get one video done. Um, but all of those drug cases, that's the exit. If you can prove the government guilty, you can prove all of the people that's on a drug related cases innocent. You can't you can't create a crime as the government and hold the citizenry um, culpable for committing the same crime that you compelled them to commit. You can't do that. That's called entrapment, and it's also uh, uh, duress. You're putting them under duress. They have no choice. The living conditions you created mixed with the drugs you brought over here create the opportunity for them to escape the poverty, and they're going to take advantage of that. Ain't nobody no damn fool. If you can sell dope, I can too. If you're the government... If you're the president of the United States, if Donald Trump right now had uh, a sack slinging out the back house, back door of the White House, why I can't sling across the street from him? I'm just saying. It's the same fucking point. So, y'all can be deceived if y'all want to, but um, I had the answer as to what happened to the angels that fell or the guys that walked among the men, where they go. I went through it genetically, spiritually, energetically. Um, I touched on a little bit about the diet and about the corruption in the system and the breakdown in the system and how it affects us. Um, if y'all really want to see some shit happen, share the shit out this video. Share the shit out of it. Because when the right people hear it, and they know that you got people sitting in prison by the thousand that should be on the street that didn't really do nothing wrong on their own accord, but they was compelled to commit a crime by their very own government who held them liable for the crime that the government committed. No. It's all in the books. 42 United States Code 1983, 19 United States Code 243, 18 United States Code 242. Um. All laws commercial, 27, um, Code of Federal Regulation 7211. It's all in the books. Everybody know how to look up duress. Duress falls under this because they use duress and they use entrapment in order to lock everybody up that's on the dope case. Y'all need to watch out for this. I'm telling y'all what the, the issue is and what the remedy is. Because it don't make no difference for me to point the problem out if I don't give you a fucking solution. I'm just another motherfucker in the way. I ain't never going to be in nobody's way. I'm going to either find a way out or I'm going to tear this bitch down. That's the only two options I got. Find a way out or destruction. And it don't matter to me either way. Um, I'm going to look through here in case somebody got some questions before I get off. And then we're going to see what we do, what it do from here. Hermetic law is the real law. Yep. Whoa. Yep, Walmart martial law. That's why they're closing all them Walmarts down so they can turn them into prisons. Um, yeah, all this stuff is, is real life. It's right in our face, Chanel. Yeah, matter of fact, the contract holders' names are in the back of Black Law Dictionary. So if you want to know who we contracted to that's holding the laws, that's uh, holding us oppressed, it's in the back of the Law Dictionary where they're supposed to be the presidents, but it got all of the name of royalty in there. And I posted on here where one of the Moors was going through it. Yep. Chanel, they locked your baby daddy up just to be locking him up because they the ones committed the crime. 
But if you don't know how to fight it, you got to fight it as a class action at this point because it affects too many people for a person to use it alone because they'll shut the door on all of the rest of the people after the one case. See, they'll create what they call an ex post facto law to clean that shit up. And then the Constitution say that they're not supposed to um, create any ex post facto laws, but they do it all the time. You know, they, you'll commit something that they say is a crime, but there's no law in the books for it. And then they'll go put a law in the books and wait for you to do it again. And then they'll charge you with all of them. Conspiracy. Conspiracy is a way to get everybody involved caught up. Yep, still owned by the Queen. Nope. As of July the 4th, the contract was up. We no longer owned by the Queen. Everybody is under my jurisdiction. I'm the Crown Prince. We ain't under her rule no more, and they already know this. That's why they talk about the last president being Trump, the last pope being Francis, and the last nation of Islam leader being Farrakhan. This is for a reason. So, um, with that, I don't see any questions that I need to an answer. So, if y'all got any questions, y'all inbox them. If y'all need me to uh, speak somewhere, y'all just tell me the address and send me a ticket. I'll come. I'll talk to y'all later. Everybody, uh, stay on y'all toes. Don't fall for their shenanigans. And I'm going to keep exposing these bastards every chance I get. All right? One love. Our intelligence, they dumbing us down. Our imagination, they telling us if you feed too much into your imagination, you're insane and you need medication. Our vigor for life, we got ADD now, ADHD, mm -hmm. right? If we can now think the teacher at an early age, he's definitely got ADHD. We definitely need to give him alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Why you say that? Because he, the teacher asked him this and he said that. And then, well, it makes sense. That's the problem. It makes sense. Right? So the little girl got a, a viral video on TikTok. And she told the teacher, you know what, Miss, uh, whatever her name was, if it, if it was my day, I, if the day was my day, I'd take a day off if I worked here. Because these kids you got, <laughs> she going in. But she making perfect sense. Right? And she telling the teacher, you know, she ain't running the class right. And if she had a choice, she wouldn't have came. <laughs> yeah. You know, you see all of these uh, little children speaking with the elders' wisdom. They told us it was going to happen at the close of the age. Yeah. It is happening now. Right. So now we got to teach the adults that don't know no better. Hey, listen to that baby. That baby telling you something. It might say your whole family. Old souls come back in new bodies. You're absolutely correct. That's just how DNA works. Can mm -hmm. we, and, and why, why, I'm glad that um, you said that because another question that a lot of brothers and sisters have been having um, that they wanted me to speak with you about is the actual step-by-step -step process of being cloned from Homo erectus to Homo sapien by the Anunnaki. Um, it's not, they didn't clone us. Okay. They didn't use cloning to make that transition. Well, what what would you call it? In vitro fertilization? They did use that method, mm -hmm. but instead of using the clone, they crossbred you with another right. species that was more evolved from another planet. So that would definitely be in vitro or in vitro fertilization because it's like taking the DNA from this thing, taking the DNA from that thing, which outlines that in the Holy Tablet. So can you elaborate on that? Well, yeah, it's it's I'm real something simple. to drink. It's it's hey. real. It's a, it's a real simple process. It's the process of um, taking two distinct species of animals that wouldn't normally interact and putting in a reproductive cells into a um, a tube, a test tube, and allowing the one species cell to fertilize the other species cell. Now, sometimes it can't happen because there's a barrier of salt barrier around the ovum of the egg that's supposed to protect it from ever being able to receive a, a, 
a sperm that's not from the same species and it's calibrated to the species. So um, when they talk about humans having babies by another species, the only way that's possible is laboratory intervention, in which case you go in and you take and you burn the um, nucleus out and you put the nucleus you want in there is one way. That's the cloning method. But you can't really cross species like that. But you can use one species to um, gestate another species if they're similar enough then you can proceed with that process. But the human homo erectus becoming um, sapien was mixed with what's known as the Cro-Magnon death. Can you hear me? Yeah, it has stopped. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, we we'll pick back right back to where we was at. Okay. Yeah. So, in the process of crossing species, it's just a matter of them being close enough to uh, just allow the sperm and the egg to naturally or to join together in a test tube, even if they wouldn't commingle in in reality. Right, the, because they they have two different DNAs, and nature says that in order for a species to be able to breed they would have to be compatible DNA-wise. So in, in, in order for you to take two incompatible species to get them to come together to breed, you would pretty much have to fuse the two cells, the daughter cells together to create one cell. Or you would have to do like they do with the tigons and the ligars, raise the male of one species with the female of the other species, and they can um, reproduce along those lines. They will, won't be averse to it as if they are in their natural habitat. Right. <coughs> so this created um, what we call a more intelligent species by them doing that. Can you elaborate a little bit on how when you put these diverse different species together through um, this process, how that affects us psychologically, physically, and so on and so forth? Well, you got to already think that the human is a composite of all species on the planet. The higher expression of every animal forms the highest expression in humanity. So this is how we get to tune in to totem animals, right? Because we're able to tie in to certain frequencies that are similar on the DNA code. And you can see through the eyes of the hawk. You can hear, you know what I'm saying, with the ears of a bat. But if you don't show reverence to that aspect of um, your psyche, you can't activate those those skills. Right. The, hum the human is not what we think it is. The body is, is a organic artificial matrix. It's the soul that's the big, deal, the big deal. It's the light body that they trap using the system collapsing the fourth and the third dimension in so that you stuck looping through two, two dimensions in the dream world manifest into a real world. We used to um, ascend and descend at will. Right. The Jacob's Ladder story is us going, us ascending and descending. Um, but then somebody decided to, to change that and interfere with the process to trap us in the bodies and use us for slaves. Right. So with that being said, the way that we have evolved from back then to now, or would you consider us to be more evolved or devolved from that process with the Anunnaki all the way up to present day? Um, that's kind of kind of difficult to say because we had different skill sets then that we didn't have now, when we got different skill sets now that we didn't have back then. The only consistency is the right now, we probably at the level of thinking of the Atlanteans, but we don't have all of the psychic abilities that they do. And what and you would notice I didn't say did in past tense. And what would give us the ability to activate those psychic abilities? Training. Well, mostly for us, it would be training because we've been taught to turn it all off. 
but they they don't have to be trained. They born using it because that's all they knew. They only knew how to psychically interact with the world around them. We only know how to interact with the 3D world around us. And if we use too much intellect, the whole world around us collapse on us. Is that because we've been trained by uh, the Tamahu or the, the European people through their educational system and their language or linguistics? Does, does, is that the main keys that play a role or are there other factors? Yeah, first we got to get out of the reality to thinking that the Tamahu controlled anything because he's been a puppet his entire existence. Okay, that's, that's step one. That's the first realization. The second realization is the black hand behind the Tamahu is the one causing the shots. And it traces all the way back to Enlil. But that being said, um, our condition right now is for us refusing to use any of our personal power, our power of sense of self. Everybody who has been taught by the system to anything that you do related to psychic phenomenon um, is evil. So therefore we try to be righteous and we try to suppress all of our natural God-given abilities. And that's what keeps us subjugated because as long as you can't use free will, then whoever wants to use your will is free to use it according to the law of use in the free will universe. Right. That's crazy because that just that just lets me know that basically we are technically allowing it to happen. <laughs> it's not that we are forced. We're allowing it to happen. Right. So it's a certain percentage of us that has to separate from the system in order to know that the system is no longer in control. And until we get to that critical number, you won't know what the number is. And when you finally get to that number, it won't be no secret you made it there. So let me ask you this. How does um, the, the, the doctrine of Nuwabu aid and assist us in taking that leap to becoming more um, able to use our psychic um, capabilities. Just the fact that, that you use the sound right reason, which is the basic tenets of Nuwapu was sound right reason and right knowledge, right understanding, right? Or right overstanding. So if you use in sound right reason, it's automatically gonna put you in the optimum position to get the best out of whatever you study, right? Because you use the same principle underlying principle as the guideline and aid in the study process. Okay. So what, just for the people, because I, I know, but I, you know, I have people that ask me these questions. Um, how would you say um, that, that that is applied? How do you say, how would you say or explain right knowledge, right wisdom, right overstanding is applied to come to the conclusion of having sound right reason and which ultimately would breed sound right action? Well, one of the things is this. For people who are not familiar with Nwapu, I teach them about critical thinking and practical problem solving, something that's easy to look out, look up. And it's the same thing as Nwapu, right? It's critical thinking and practical problem solving. So we need a frame of reference for the non nuwabian student to know what I'm talking about when I say sound right reasoning. If you can think clearly, you obviously not gonna make the mistake because you're gonna see it. Right. But if you don't see the mistake, that means you haven't done your diligence to study the craft in order to know where the mistake would be made. That means you're not ready for your next lesson because you haven't got this one yet. I actually um, I actually overstood that for years. And so what I did as an introductory is I created, um, well, I didn't create um, pretty much the ancestors spoke through me to be able to write it down, a foundation called Tanweeb. And Tanweeb is um, a, a system that gives you the basic synopsis of Nuwabu in a way to whereas it makes it very easy to understand and it's practical. It's it's Nuwapu in application. Um, because a lot of people, and I spoke I spoke to my mentor about this, 
um, several times and uh, he's given me a lot of great advice on it that, you know, a lot of times people just want to sound heavy. So they want to read all this stuff that's going to make them sound heavy or deep, but that's technically not what it's about. The, the, the protocols of Nuwabu, right knowledge, right wisdom, right overstanding, is basically the keys to unlocking um, the critical thinking aspect of your brain so that you can problem solve. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, um, you know, I just wanted you to put that out there for the brothers and sisters that um, wanted to know kind of sort of how do they actually practice that? Because I think that yeah. sometimes it's, it's being made more complicated than what it is. It's really not that complicated. Well, you know, the answer is to say the simplest answer is normally the right one. <laughs> Basically. Right. Because <laughs> they used to reduce every down, everything down to the simplest answer. So just because we got the complex definition don't mean we got the right answer. Absolutely. Right? And that's why a lot of the guys like Damon Williams played that character on um, In Living Color and he, he used all of the wrong words in the wrong places.